Hey guys, welcome back to another episode on how to hack. So we're here at Mutility, which is a vulnerable web application platform for us to learn about ethical hacking, penetration testing on common web vulnerabilities. And this is our support on the left side, as you can see, Open Web Application Security Project 2017. And today we're going to look at cross-site scripting. So right here, okay, we have this page, which is the password generator page. All right, so you can access this from OBUS 2017, go under A1 injection order, and then you can go ahead and click under JavaScript injection and click under password generator. Okay, go ahead and click on it. So once you're in, you can see the following, right? Making strong passwords is important. Click the button below to generate a password. This password is for anonymous. So once you click generate password, you can see that it will automatically generate some recommended passwords that are strong, has 10 characters and above, mixture of upper lower cases and symbols. So the next thing for us to do is in terms of examining this web page, where is the injection point? Where exactly can we go after and input our payload into the system? So that's the key question to ask when you're examining a web page. All right, so what we can do now is I can go ahead and use magnifier so that it's easier for you to see. So the number one injection point that we can go after is actually under the URL. Right, so as you can see here, we have the following URL, right? So we have index.php question mark page equal password dash generator dot PHP and username equal. Okay, and this is a really important part because all I gotta do is just change the username equal. Let's say I change it to Loy Liang Yang. I hit enter on this, and we can see the update, right? This password is for Loy Liang Yang. So immediately we can see the changes, and this is going to be the input field for us to be able to inject into the website, injecting our own script into the website, which is called cross-site scripting, injecting our own script into the site. So what I can do next is go to the top right corner, all right, and you can go ahead and click under preferences. And in preferences, scroll all the way down, all right, click under network settings and select manual proxy configuration. All right, so we have the HTTP proxy, all right, this is 127.0.0.1 and on port 8080. So click OK on this. And what I can do is to go ahead and open up a terminal. All right, and all I got to do is enter burp suite. Hit enter on this. And this will start a burp suite to intercept all those information that we send from the browser into the web application system. So I can click close, I can click next, and I can use burp defaults. Click start burp. All right, so once we're in, Go under the proxy tab and make sure that you have the intercept is on. All right. So once the intercept is on, go back to Firefox. Okay. I can do a refresh. All right. And right here, we have intercepted. So I can do a right click, send to repeater. All right. Go ahead and click under repeater. So you can see the repeater tab in orange now. All right. And right here, we can see we have the get. All right. And then we have the mutility password generator dot PHP. All right. And username equal. So you can just click send. And I can do a quick search, all right? And this is the part that is displaying, all right, using dot inner HTML, right? So there is a document dot get element, all right? So this is an element inside the HTML page, which is called ID username input, all right? And dot inner HTML, this password is for Loy Liang Yang. So they are actually updating the information through this JavaScript, as you can see here. And we have the script. Okay, and then we have try, we have document.getElement by ID, and we have catch alert. Okay, so if there's an error, it would actually display the error message using e.message. Okay, so it's very important for us to actually understand JavaScript, HTML, and how it's being used to actually represent information, all right, or how it's being used to give the user a different kind of customer experience. So what we can do next is to go ahead and copy this whole chunk of script all right, do a right click and you can just click under copy or you can just do a control C. Go ahead and open up, for example, mousepad. All right, or you can use any of the IDEs to actually paste the code over. Okay, and I'm going to explain to you precisely what it all means. How are we able to generate a payload that allow us to actually hijack into the JavaScript? Okay, so over here, this is the value. The one highlighted in purple is the value that we are trying to replace. So we're trying to replace this with our own script. So of course, what we can do next is that we can go ahead. Okay, I already have the payload on the 
top here, as you can see, but I'm going to explain to you precisely what we are trying to do. All right, so we have this password is for the following user, okay? And what we're trying to do now is I'm just going to highlight to you, right, how it looks like when we try to inject it, okay? So what we're trying to do here, okay, is to close this off, all right? So we are closing this off, all right? And again, this is a semicolon that is used in JavaScript to actually help us close off the initial statement. All right. And of course, the next thing you can look at is in terms of over here. So you have a curly open bracket, try. Okay. And then we can close it with a closing curly bracket over here. So we can close it over here. So this will close the try statement. And what we can do next is to replicate what is shown over here, which is a catch. So we're trying to catch some error messages. So I can enter catch. Okay. So we are repeating here. And then I can have a open curly bracket followed by a closing curly bracket. Okay, so again, we are not going to have any kind of display of data or display of information where we catch certain error messages. That's not the purpose of the what we're trying to do here in the payload. What we're trying to do here is to have our own script and we want to test whether this site is susceptible to cross-site scripting. So we will use an alert, okay? And with the alert, all right, this would then be sent, all right, immediately or being executed immediately, hacked it by Loy, all right? And what I can do now is to have a semicolon, okay? And this closes off the first part of everything that you're seeing here, okay? So this closes off the first part of everything that you're seeing here. So what we're trying to do next is to be able to close off the rest of the instruction, okay? We're trying to close off the rest of the instruction. So we have try, all right? Then we have an open curly bracket, and then you can put whatever variable name you want, okay? So all we got to do is over here, okay, equal, and then followed by a double quote. So this double quote will close off this part. All right, so this curly bracket and this uh, double quote will close off this part. Okay, we'll close off this part. And then you have a closing curly bracket. It will close off the try, and then you have a catch. All right, so this closes the rest of the other part of the script, the ending part of the earlier script that you saw. So with that, this is our payload. All right, so our payload will start from this part, okay, which is the double quote, all the way to the following. Okay, so this will be our payload and we'll inject this into the website, right, to check whether this site is susceptible to cross-site scripting attacks. So what I can do now is to go back, okay, and copy the payload here. Okay, go ahead and copy it over here. It's the same payload. So I go back to say Firefox, which is your browser, and I can actually go under preferences, okay, and I can close off the proxy, no more proxy. Okay, I can go back to the browser and all I got to do is paste the payload over here. Okay, so let me just delete off the first name. All right, so we have the following payload in the URL. Loy Liang Yang, double quote, semicolon, closing curly bracket. All right, catch, followed by E. All right, and closing off of the catch statement. Alert. All right, so we're trying to test whether the site is susceptible to cross-site scripting attack. And then closing off the rest of the JavaScript statement. All right. So let's hit enter and see what happens. Right here, we got a pop-up, okay? So again, what can we do when a website is susceptible to JavaScript attacks? It means that we're able to say, for example, copy this whole link, send it to a user, and once a user clicks onto the link, we can redirect the user. We can redirect the user to a different site. Okay, we can make certain instructions, for example, taking the cookie data of the user and then sending it over into one of our servers that we have running to capture all those data and information, all right? So a lot of things that you can do once you discover a cross-site scripting vulnerability on a website, and you can exploit it for a lot of different kind of payloads, all right? So once again, I hope you have learned something valuable in today's tutorial. And if you have any questions, feel free to leave a comment below, and I'll try my best to answer any of your questions. And we'll like, share, and subscribe to the channel so that you can be kept abreast of the latest cybersecurity tutorial. Thank you so much once again for watching.